what's up looks like we're rocking and freaking rolling here just had to check from a viewer standpoint how's everybody doing today do we have people oh yeah we got people unable to connect to chat but I'm in the middle I'm gonna see if uh How's everybody doing today? Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're at. Feel free to comment in the chat box or the live chat if you're connecting. Uh, if you click the link from the Rayac stream on Facebook or somewhere else, um, if you need to ask a question that's being put to you, go ahead and uh, put it in the comment of the stream and then we'll put it into the chat. So if you're not watching it, directly on YouTube, either the mobile app or desktop, feel free to check on YouTube, put a comment in there, and talk, because we're going to be here for a while. Just be letting you know where we're at, so that's for sure. For those of you friends down there, say what's up. And, uh, let's see. Let me know how it's looking. go ahead and share this link with some other folks make sure I still got some of my people in here know who's here in the chat when we get this show on the road. Six people are watching it, but if you comment in the live chat, it'll say um, just ask Alex if you can watch it. I don't know who the other one is. Check one, two, three, Alex, two seconds. Master, founder of the, oh, Earthquake Inc., man, that's a, 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 that's
I think the world could use it. Like, uh, so many, uh, so many singers. Thoughts of it, folks, uh, here at Cam and Iron. Oh, the night number is supposed to be Friday, so I should have checked. Mm, no. Not that that's the least of my worries. Oh, thank you, Paolo. Decided to change the mic setup at the last minute, so how's this? Let's see. So I wanted to get this desktop mic. Oh, that might be better. I always see the levels going up. Hopefully it's not too too grainy for you guys. How's that? There we go. All right. Sorry about that. I switched to this mic last minute because it's got a nice little desktop stand. I was using the um, the Yeti USB, but um, I wanted to. Um, let me go ahead and turn that up even more. There we go. Yeah, I wanted to hook up the helix and use that as the interface because once this thing is all put together um, hopefully uh, you guys can hear it hopefully it'll work all right there's Alec all right everybody's here all the most important people are here so let's do this I'm gonna go ahead and close that because I think I'm choking my bandwidth um, all right so what we're here to do today, as most of you all probably know, is we are going to transplant, in a sense, not really that much of a transplant like my buddy Ralph does, um, but uh, we're going to take this guitar, Let's see this is a better camera but for some reason it's being all jittery, we're going to take this very X standard and we're going to put it into this very X standard body. So as you can see here, I might as well look at the camera here. As you can see, we already got the bridge. We already got the battery box. Uh, obviously the trim springs that connect to the bridge and a couple of cables from those parts. So why am I wearing this thing on my head and looking all goofy? Because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and switch to that camera. And now you can see my messy desk and all my tools and everything else that's going on. Let me know if, how that looks. If you guys can see, um, see my desk and the GoPro going on here. Is that looking all right? What's up, Poppy? Poppy Chulo? Diego Rivera? How you doing, man? I think there's a bit of latency, probably about 20 seconds or so between my audio and your comments, so apologize, but that's YouTube, you know, and everybody's streaming, everybody and their mother right now. I tried to schedule this um, outside of uh, the usual times here um, for some other shows. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to take away from anybody else's show or things that they got going on. But, um, yeah. Proctology 101. <laughs> nice, man. How many people do we have on here? I don't even know. Eight. 
concurrent viewers. Hey, that's one more than seven. I'll take it. Seven's my lucky number. All right, so um, anyways, you guys can see the, the GoPro all right when I switch to that. Just want to make sure. Yep, okay. So hopefully I don't run out of battery before we're done, but um, in case I do, I do have uh, this backup battery and I can just stick it in the little strap side of my head. So let's take a look at this. So first thing I want to do is, and let me know if, if the, uh, you got to do this head cam thing. Yeah, I know, right? Alec and I were talking about this last night, how we like to mess with people. Um, I'm trying to make you guys motion sick, so hopefully you didn't just eat. Let's just take the neck off first, because everything we really got to do is, involves the body, and you know it'll be a little bit less awkward. So hopefully my buddy Partev is on here. I don't know if he saw it. If somebody wants to message Partev, the link that'd be great because I know he would love this and he kind of had a hand in this a little bit um, he started to help me assemble the the red one where this the destination this is going to so um, shout out to Partev thanks man always fun to work with you brother I could actually do this like split screen, but I wanted to make the GoPro as big as possible so you guys could see all the details. In fact, I think when I um, restarted this, it went back to widescreen. So I'm going to attempt to change this to a narrower view so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. So let me just switch it so you don't get super motion sick. Um, let's do, ah, narrow. That's what I wanted. Plus you'll see less of the mess. <clears throat> okay. I think this is a lot better. Right? Yeah. All right. And then you can also see my bunny slippers. <laughs> <clears throat> all right guys well and gals if there's any gals i don't know if my wife's watching she's probably watching netflix instead it's more interesting than me so take the neck off put that down we don't need it anymore <clears throat> and just for shits and giggles <coughs> excuse me I don't even think we need, we did so much prep work, I don't think we need to remove this, but, um, yeah, this is like probably the easiest job that you could do with a transplant because, as you see, with a pick guard, strat-like thing, it's all mounted there, so, should go pretty easy, but, um, I know a lot of you guys were, you know, curious and always asking questions. So I've been meaning to do this anyway. And I know a lot of people are stuck at home, not to mention it is Sunday. Look at all that dust. Ugh. Um, so I figured what the hell. But yeah, nothing really to see there. But, you know, we can appreciate the grain. I just felt like taking that cover off. Um, but you can see the PCB that's mounted here to connect the piezos. That's already in the other guitar. Um, so we're going to need this. We're going to need all these covers. So we're going to save the covers and the screws. In fact, I'm going to put the screws in this little thing here. But yeah, feel free to comment, guys. Ask some questions. Tell me what you're drinking for your beverage of choice for me. This is a uh, Burmese 3 in 1 instant coffee. If you guys didn't get the good mug shot earlier, 
<laughs> mugshot, get it? Um, yeah, I love friends. Okay, so this is obviously the main board. This is going to the bridge. Um, and then this goes to your IO and a bunch of other stuff. We don't need to take the battery box out because if we look at here, we already got the battery box. Um, just going to gently set this down over here. And um, yeah, we're not going to need this bridge. So I'm going to disconnect this bridge cable. And it's soldered in there, so I can't like pull it out. But I'm just going to try to tuck it off to the side so it's out of the way when we go to pull this out. Um, and the battery here, we can disconnect the battery box. I should just leave the battery box out because I pretty much never use the batteries anyway, unless I'm like reflashing the firmware or something. But, but you know, good practice. So a little background on, on this. Um, obviously, this is the main brain of everything, right? Uh, you got your, your DSP. You got some uh, analog to digital converters in here, and some other other proprietary stuff. Well, not the components aren't proprietary; the layout is. But um, you can see it as well as I can, so that's that. Um, you want to be careful with this harness because even though all this stuff's glued in, you definitely don't want to um, pull anything up. And if you know, I've, I've been an electronics technician since I went into the Marine Corps. That was my job there. Um, but uh, and I, then I went to school and became an electrical engineer. So I'm not really practicing what I preach about having an ESD strap. But I think I'll be okay. But I should tell you, oh, look at that. A washer. Um, yeah, this is this is kind of this works as far as I'm aware. Um, I tested it just before this live stream uh, without strings, but I could tell that it worked. Um, but uh, yeah, this thing's been a little beat up. So um, yeah. Anyway, to ideally you want to kind of pull the header of this not so much on the wires themselves. This is the kind of tricky one because it's really tight, as you can see. I don't know how that's showing up in the camera. I think it's showing up pretty good, but you can see it's pretty tight in here. Um, so I'd recommend a plastic spudger, as they call it. Um, but I don't have one right here right now. So I'm going to just gently use this metal one. If I cared about the finish, I'd put something underneath it. There, but I don't care about this one. Hopefully you guys can hear me too because I'm talking down into my chest and the microphone's over here. Oh, Nikki, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Sorry, I'm just reading the comments trying to catch up. Finally, I can see my comments. Coffee with a half can of Starbucks double shot black. Nice. Paolo, Peroni beer, nice. Got a few paisanos on the chat here. I uh, I did want to take a moment to, um, you know, I know we're, we're trying to use this as a distraction from what's going on, but we obviously can't ignore it too much. So shout out to all my friends and relatives in Italy dealing with the worst of this whole crisis. Um, of course, it's, you know, one one uh, person getting it or one death is one too many. So uh, thoughts out to everybody, but especially, um, you know, all my paisanos and paisanas out in, in Italy. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's tragic. I'm going to leave the main board here for now um, while I work on the rest because I just want to keep it protected. Um, until the end here. So, 
Perfect. All right. Great. Good. It's it's so like lonely to be like talking in an empty room um, to myself here, uh, you know, and having to look up at the comments. But of course, if we had like a zillion people on here, I'll try and talk at the same time. It'd probably get pretty nuts. Um, but anyways, okay. So now again, we don't need to take the bridge off because there's one on here. But let's take this pick guard off and see what's going on under here. Hey look, A, B. It's like my initials. Come in from, oh, sorry, that was the, the pickup one. I don't wanna do that. I was like distracted by the, the writing over here. Uh, Prego, my friend, Prego. If you guys got any questions like we can just chit chat too you know we don't have to just be talking about transplanting variax parts oh by the way this thing's all messed up i need a new tuning knob that one's the cap fell off and it's not even the right knob but i can take one off another unit that i have for now One more. It's important to put your screws in a safe area. I know I dropped one of the neck screws down here earlier. All right. Man, I wish Partev was in here. Where's he at? The new bridge, yes, it already has the piezos. Let me show you. Um, who asked that? My other Nick. Is that... Nikki T, do you have like two accounts or what? Um, yeah, the piezos are already here. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, the cable's already there, so we're good to go. You could put like a little piece of foam paper or something under that if you want to keep it nice and pretty. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, this is the easiest out of all the guitars to work on. This and the 69, of course, because they have pick guards, so everything's mounted here. Um, let me try to figure out the best way to show you this. So on the back here, we have all the components. We have this ground wire. That's important. You can see a bit of the... Let me see if that's coming up. Yeah, you can see a bit of the I.O. board on there. Um so yeah, so all these wires go to that uh, harness that we saw over there. But I just wanted to loosen it for now. Of course, if this was like a 59 or a shuriken or something, you know, 59 is probably the most in intensive because you have, um, you know, the three-way, you've got mag pickups and you got to route those cables. So, you know, I'm all about no pickups. Ooh, a little splash in my coffee there. You do have two accounts. Well, hey, that counts as two viewers, so I'll take it, man. All right. Yeah, um, I would Gorilla Glue the cap on, but I don't have the cap. It fell off somewhere, and that's a model knob anyway. So, But I ha I've got some laying around or... I could hit up Partev or something. All right, so let's look at the back again here. I'm gently holding the front while I try to fish this out. You know what? I think it's going to be the way these are laying, lying, however you want to say it. I think it's going to be easier to take the I.O. panel off and fish this out first. So... Fun fact or note about the I.O. panels, um, man, these screws have seen better days. Um, nice to have magnetic tip screwdrivers, but sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain uh, to get them off one hand. But with, when you're working with one hand, it's very convenient. See that? Nice. Um, with these I.O. panels, 
one thing some of you may not know is they do have different ones for the different body styles because as you can see the curvature it's not going to be the same for each so there's one for the 59 there's one for this the 69 the shuriken um, I saw somebody replace theirs with a part that they got um, which you know if I was still working for the company I'd tell you bring it to a service center but if you feel like doing that or you're you know uh, a trained technician then go for it um, but yeah somebody said that they bought one that wasn't the exact one but they you know it was close enough for government work okay so you see how I just once I took this off and I just slid this to the side you know coming up in the camera um, you know, I can just gently slide this this out here. Careful not to hit the components on the main board. You don't want to. If if you screw up the main board, well, it's toast. So this isn't normally supposed to happen, but this little jack plate, this little nut fell out. But that's pretty simple to screw that back in. Make sure that ground contact. This should never happen to any of you, but like I said, this was kind of a parts guitar I had laying around. Um, I have, oh, where is this one? No, that's not the right size. I got the right size around here somewhere. I'm not the other Nick of Nicky T. What are you the Nick of? Nick at night? Nickelodeon? Some people have gotten their necks uh, for the 69 from Warmoth, so um, yeah, I'm going to need pliers for that, but it's good enough for now because it's kind of recessed and shallow, so the so those sockets aren't working too well on that. Anyway, um, yeah, so well, I'll talk about neck pockets in a second. Let me do this. So I, you saw the ground wire I showed you earlier. That's one goes to here, one goes to the pick guard assembly. So what I want to do, now a note, if you're just replacing, well, I'll, I'll tell you the note in a second. Let me get this out. So we're going to go ahead and take this ground screw out. And thank goodness for magnetic tips. And then that will allow us to slide this out gently. And then now we can manipulate this main wire harness and gently slide out. Again, being careful not to hit the main board. Take this out. There you go. So other than the main board, this guitar body is now the same as that guitar body. So, um, yeah. So this is definitely the easiest of them all. If you have a <clears throat> like a 59 or a shuriken or something, you're going to have to you know, take the, the pickup selector and the knobs and everything off individually. Uh, or if you wanted to change the pick guard, now would be a good time. Um, you know, you could do that. But I'm pretty sure that's why Fender, uh, when they came out with the Strat, right, it was all about cost efficiency. So it was like, that's where they have a bolt-on neck. That's why they have a pick guard, because it's like, assemble everything, slap it together, off to the next. You know, more or less. Um, but yeah, a note about neck pockets, since you guys were talking about necks. So, the 
69, which I have one over here. Look at my rack of Variax, except for, well, there's a couple of already dark, but this is actually, this whole room is like the I Dimension room. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, I've got lots of Ibanez, Joe Satriani, John Petrucci, whoop, I went up a little too high, uh, Steve Vai, Models, RGs, Galore, and there's a base in the back wall. Um, but let me, I'm going to switch the screen for a second. So sorry, this camera's a little jittery for some reason. It was working fine last night. There's your other account. Okay. Just so lots of Nicks here. It must be Nick at night. Um, so this is a very special 69. In fact, it's the only 69 like this. There were several um, 69 models done like this. Uh, this was These were actually done for the Mad Tea Party um, show at Disneyland here in California, down in Anaheim, a couple hours away. Um, so they had a few Variax 69s. They had a few Pacificas um, that they used for the show. So this was used in the show. What happened was the Disney Imagineers and uh, actually no one of them. He, I don't think he worked on this project, but uh, one of the Imagineers, a friend of mine, lives in Simi Valley, just 20 minutes from me. Great guy. Um, he designs like all the rides and stuff. But the Imagineers went and came up with this rap graphic that they put on for the guitar so it was matched the show they did it to the headstock um you can go more in, maybe i'll do a whole video on this guitar because some people might be interested but anyway the of uh, the very axes there was one jtb 69 that's this one and there was i think two or three i think three 69 s so with without the humbucker here um one is in the lobby or somewhere in the building on display at, at line six and the other two in addition with this one were sold off for charity uh to support music cares so uh i paid way more than what this guitar this is a korean model what this um cost off the production line but it was all for a good cause and i'm happy to support my fellow musicians in need um again sorry for the the jittery camera there but i um it's way better than this FaceTime camera and I wanted you guys to get a good close-up look at this so this is the Mad Tea Party guitar but anyway um, I want to talk about the neck pockets again so with the 69 although you can't really see the bolt pattern well, I guess you can a little bit in the reflections um, the pocket itself is the same as a, a fender sized pocket strap pocket and as well as that meaning that when you put a fender type neck in here the scale length right not to bridge is it doesn't change from what's on here stock the difference is the whole pattern so if you are going to have a luthier make you a, a fender sized and pocketed neck um and uh or you're gonna get one from like warmoth or something that's all good i'd suggest getting it undrilled because they usually come pre-drilled you get them undrilled set the neck yourself um you know i'm sure there's tutorials where you can ask your luthier if your luthier is gonna install it he can do it or she can do it um but have them put uh you know pilot holes and put those screws in so um yes a fender strat type dimension neck will fit in a 69 however let me put this away <laughs> yes i'm sick for purple you know it you know it um oh by the way this shirt this is actually a book so i'm not really into pedals but um I do like 
the books. Uh, if you go to b j o o k s dot com, books in Norwegian or some Scandinavian language. Um, they have three books: Pedal Crush, um, Push Turn Move, and another one um, that are all about synthesis and pedals and effects. Really great books. Really great pictures. But yeah, that's what the shirts from turn on a guitar once we put it all together we will so anyways um with the standard very act standard right this is based off the yamaha pacifica strat style guitar right um i'd say strat style because obviously double cutaway you know it's got your traditional birth you know looks like a strat but it's not a strat it's a pacifica uh, so it has its differences in geometry and dimensions it's just i'd say more reminiscent of a strat it's a uh more modernized strat or the evolution of a strat right it's yamaha's take on that um but the neck pocket is different so if you if we put this neck in here, well, first of all, it's actually great that we have these taken apart because if you notice, like with most strats, the fretboard hangs off the edge of, here, I'm going to show it up close here. The fretboard will hang off the edge of the neck, like the, the main meat of the neck, right? Um, but in the, in the Variac Standard and any Yamaha Pacifica, that's not the case. Uh, they're flush. <clears throat> so what that means is that the this body, this base of the neck is actually longer than it would be on a Fender Strat. So for some of you into, you know, guitar luthery and tone woods and all that science and somewhat mystical stuff, um, there's science behind everything. But uh, yeah, that would give you more contact to the body, so a little more resonance, sustain. Um, so it's just different. But in any case, if you took a fender style neck, it's going to be a little shorter than this. I think the width might be a little slightly different. Um, don't quote me on that. But if you were to put a fender neck, even if the width was fine, into this pocket, you would essentially be dropping it down a little bit because the fender neck is shorter than this. Uh, so you'd shorten the scale length. That's why you don't want to put a fender neck into a Pacifica or a Variac standard. Um, and I think <laughs> I am a guitar nerd. Not as much as most people. Um, I'm actually I'm a synth nerd too, if you guys notice there. And then the ultimate marriage of it all, the keytar, right? That's not, I have more than one, of course, more than one of everything, but I have tons of keytars that, um, you know, are the marriage of, in a way, <laughs> um, guitar and keys somewhat. But, uh, oh, grazie mille. Appreciate that, Paolo. That's, you're too kind, man. I can't play like him, so <laughs> don't set the bar too high, man. <laughs> um, yes, so Nicky uh, can chime in here. He had a custom neck, that's what I was about to talk about, uh, handmade for his standard, and he loves it, which is awesome. So if you want to find out more, hit up my man, Nicky T. He can give you all the download on that. Um, maybe send some business to his way, like to his luthier who's probably, uh, you know, short on work right now. A lot of people are. Um, so, yeah, spread the love. Um, let's see. I'm just going to catch up on the comments before I jump back into this. Okay. My coffee's getting a little full. Take the door off my 69. Oh, yeah. So this little, I'm assuming you're talking about this dust cover. You could totally take this out. Um, some people break it off. Um, there's a little pin. If, 
Here, I'm going to turn switch back to the GoPro. Oh, great. Cuban doctors arrived in Italy. That's awesome. What's up there, Eric? How you doing, brother? Nice to see you. Eric, you're going to love this if you just joined. I've got a GoPro wirelessly streaming video to OBS to send out the live stream so you can see exactly what's going on here. Um, it might make some people motion sick, but I think it's cool to give them the, the deets on what's going on. So there's a pin here, and um, I don't have a set of pliers on me, but let me see if we can... No. I'm just going to see if we can take this pin out. Oh, I think it's going. Trying not to hit this freaking PCB here. Oh, we got the pin almost out. Ideally, if you have some needle nose pliers or something. That'll work best. Let me find a small Phillips. Uh, where did my little Phillips go? Got a small one and that's this guy. Oh no. I guess this one. No, maybe that straight one will work better. This guy. All right. Well, the spring's out. So. This is if you want to, you know, preserve the door, not break it off like a cro magnon. So if you ever want to sell it, not that you'd ever want to sell your Variax, or if you just want to restore it back to its original state, you can. So hey, we did it without needle nose pliers. Oh, sorry, I gotta adjust the GoPro. Yeah, it's looking a little slim. There we go. You don't want to see my fat belly, but yeah, we got the pin out with a screwdriver and my fingers. So there you go. That's how to take the door off. We're just mixing tutorials here. So there you go. If you want to take the door off and just have an open jack. And we'll just leave it like that because hey, one less thing to move out of our way. I'm glad you love it, man. I'm glad you love it, Eric. And I'm glad you're here. Uh, I know you just had an epic show as well. I watched most of it before I had to jump off to prep for this show. Oh, I was actually prepping a little bit while I was listening, so that was uh, entertaining. Great to see a few Canadians on there. Um, you, Dude, setting up for this, as you guys know, I kind of wanted to do this live last night while my wife was sleeping so she wouldn't get upset at me today. Oh, I just realized what this washer was for. It was for that. Oh, well, I'll put it on later. Um, but, uh, yeah, had some technical difficulties. And then while troubleshooting uh, all of this setup, including this GoPro right here that you guys are looking at, um, yeah, I ran the battery down. So I was like, okay, well, I guess that's not happening. But in um, any case, I'm glad everyone's here. And uh, I'm glad we were able to do this. I think it's probably a better time anyway. We can get more people involved. So we're done with this except for the main board. Um, but I'm going to wait to put this in later uh, until later because I want to protect it for now and not have it in my way when I'm going to fish some cables through. So that's that. All right. Yes, Alec talked about the electrical shielding. Yeah, uh, very important. No corners cut there. Um, speaking of, of EMI and, and noise and stuff, it was funny. When I went to test this body with, with the Helix, which you can see on the floor here. By the way, I set up the QWERTY key commands to transition OBS I don't know if it's gonna work but I would it's not the helix that's having issues it's it's OBS I don't know why it's a known problem where the even with the keyboard right the shortcut keys stop working but 
that was really easy to set up and that was the first time i actually set up key commands they they'll work for a while but for some reason obs like you need to do some some background hacking to keep it alive i guess um, but anyway i plugged in with vdi the sunburst guts um, but i had no strings on it but it was funny once i plugged it in you know it starts up in mag mode immediately i hear all this noise well it's duh single coils and then as soon as i hit the model button the uh of course the noise all goes away and it's like ah so refreshing so that's one reason why i never use mags and i always use the models so um and another benefit as well <laughs> you like my bunny slippers alec uh a prize of pride to anybody who can tell me what these bunny, what movie these bunny slippers are from. Um, all right. Yes, Nikki, I have the camera on my head. Uh, here, I'm going to switch to FaceTime so you can see. Here's a GoPro on my head. And now you're seeing what I see. So, okay. So let's do this. So let's first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, a little different order than I took these out. Um, actually, no. I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna stick to the order I had. You'll see why. So let's. Um, we'll put this grounding lead on uh, later. But first, I just want to fish this main. Um, and see, it's much easier with the main board not there right that pretty much just slid right in because it's kind of almost preformed to fit in there so let's put that in there and um, now we can put if you guys can see it I want to get this grounding screw or grounding lead in here because that's going to go in the main cavity and then I also want to put um, this in here I'm just going to hold it there temporarily okay that's that now I'm going to go back to the front and already looking badass I'm going to grab that grounding lead maybe I should have stuck with my original oh there it is pull that grounding lead in and you know what this guitar doesn't have though it doesn't have the conductive paint on the inside again this was just kind of like a little experiment um, but I can go ahead and put that back later because uh, again this is pretty easy to work on so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in yeah if you notice the other one has all this black conductive paint um, you really want that because that and it, it adds with the uh, shielding here but what that would do if the black conductive paints in here That'll actually connect to these grounds and they'll all be linked together. So we really don't have any grounding on the back here. Um, forgot to mention that at the beginning, but I just want, you know, obviously I can't run to the store and get grounding paint right now um, with the current situation. So it is what it is. All right. So we'll come back to the back haha, later. Um, and we'll first address the front. Look at how this is taking shape. I love it. Um, so I just want to look right here. I might be getting bound up by that grounding wire a little bit. Yep. Let's tuck that in. There we go. The um, the little uh, crimp for the grounding wire was sticking up a little bit, pushing on the pick card. So, all right, 
I think what would be really cool is to change all these screws to black. But that's the easy change later on down the line. Or we can keep them chrome. They got a chrome bridge. Kind of works. So can you actually fit the main PCB in the back? back in the cavity without a lot of hassle on the cables. Yeah, we're, we're gonna put the, the PCB back in a second. Um, I'm only gonna screw a couple of these in just to hold it in place in case we need to take it off or something later. Um, but yeah, this was already pre-drilled so I don't know who's messaging me on Facebook, but I can't see it or liking my post or whatever. Um, anywho, I think that's looking pretty bitching. These pickups are like super low, but that's all good. I uh, use them anyway, and keeping them low keeps them out of interfering with the modeling. So, cool. Uh, let's flip this back over. And this should be to go all right get our four shitty screws that are all rusty or whatever oxidized here So with these I.O. panel screws, I like to just start them just to get everything lined up. I mean, you kind of should do that anyway with most screws. But I uh, like to get them just started. And did I drop one? What happened? Let's see. Oh, maybe one got mixed in with here. Hmm. How many do I have here? So these were for the cavity covers. So if we have six and four is how many? like kids show one <laughs> two <laughs> four three six okay we dropped one somewhere along, along the way here well it's not going to prevent this from working so let's just get to it find that one later see even when you try to keep the screws all done right they still drop them doesn't help that they're black screws and they got a black floor all right dinner on the stove go for it eric um enjoy man i'm gonna have to eat after this yeah i like the color too man all right so we got the front on, we got this IO panel on, battery box is already installed. Now let's go ahead and take PCB. You know what? I'm gonna slide this over here a little bit. Slide this one. And if I had some like blue tape or something, I might like tape these out of the way. These I can just stick under these trim springs for now. Keep them out of the way. Oh, there's our other screw. See, I knew it was around here. Okay. Yeah. It it matches the, well, it kind of matches the emoji. If it had a white pick guard, it would. But honestly, I, I like the black pick guard. Um... Oh, I need the P2 for that. Sorry, this thing is this. I bought these 
you know, over Christmas or whatever for the holiday sale. This one throws me off because the tip is a P2, but it's just so meaty that I feel like it's like a P3 or something. That's what she said. Oh, this thing's yelling at me. Yeah, shut that camera off. We don't need it. Take this main board out. Definitely be careful with these screws. So they have a lock washer on them. I guess when I turned off that camera, it really stopped choking my computer here. I'm going to have to hit up Eric or one of these other guys for the optimal OBS settings because YouTube always yells at me no matter what resolution I'm at. So I can't seem to get something I like. All right. So four screws for the main board. Put them right here. And we want to gently take this out. Try not to touch any of the components. But there's a Variax main board for you. Uh, I think there is. Oh, yeah, this is the, the good Rev C here. The caps and stuff on the back. You know, test points, whatnot. Anyway, nothing that interesting for most of you. But um, yeah, like I said, we really want to have that conductive paint in here. But. For now, this will work. Um, I'll get some at a later date and do this properly. But yeah, you want to hold the edges of the board. Again, ideally I should have a wrist strap and an EMI pad on here, but I don't. And the world might end, so who cares right now. Really, these cables here. Again, you don't want to force any of this stuff. Patience is an uncommon virtue, but one that is required for working on electronics. People ask me all the time, oh, how are you so calm? And stuff. It's like, um, you know, like I mentioned, I was in the Marines. I was an electronics technician there. So when you're at, oh, you know what I don't have? I don't have the little inserts in there. So for now, I'm going to use, don't do this at home, kids. Use these little wood screws. Fold this in. Go down. Let, let me, what do I have that I could use? You know what, this will hold itself in for now. But, um, yeah, when you're at war, and you don't have the parts you need, and you're trying to fix radios and electronics while people are trying to blow you up, you learn to have a little bit of patience. Like I saw one of my friends live streaming yesterday or the day before. I think it was Friday. Um, my buddy Steve Marchena. I think it was, was playing Patience by the Scorpions. I think that's who did it, right? Or no, sorry. Not Scorpions. That was freaking Guns N' Roses. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Obviously, I need to eat because my brain isn't working. Plus, I'm focused on this right now. Um, but, uh, oops. I should have done the I.O. one first. Lesson learned. So let's, again, try not to flex the wires too much and grab the connector header instead. If you have like a pair of needle nose pliers, you can grab the body of these like Molex connectors pretty well. That helps. Um, so 
yeah, I'm going to get the connect or conductive paint and uh, those little screw inserts later. Put that in, but for now, this isn't going anywhere. So I am going to put this cover on real quick. Yeah, I'm just going to put a couple screws in here. This part is not pre drilled. Um, and I don't have my drill on me, and I don't want to go get it. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting, but I would pre-drill these, but this this will work. You learn to MacGyver stuff a lot in the Marines because, again, not only is it like you're under the gun, literally, but um, usually it takes forever to get replacement parts, so you figure out ways to make do with what you have our motto in the marine corps one of many was adapt and overcome so you know pretty much means make do with what you got so we'll leave just those two for now we don't need the trim cavity cover right now um let's take a look at the front here let me catch up on the comments oh hang on a second I don't think the video froze. I think maybe my battery died on my GoPro. Did it? Oh no, it just timed out, I think. Battery might be dead. Thankfully, I came prepared. Somewhat. And I have this backup battery. <laughs> can you see uh can you see me on the regular video yeah no it wasn't obs it was my gopro died for i don't know if, yeah it only had three percent battery i guess when you're live feeding this it runs the battery way faster than normal but thankfully i can run off this backup battery what's up diego Man, Diego and I had plans to get together and uh, um, hang out, whatnot, make some music. But, of course, that all got shattered with what we got going on. All right. Yeah, man. And apologies in advance, or not in advance, for not sending you the reason session for the stuff we recorded when you were here last time. Um, Cause I still haven't moved it over. I just moved the computer back up to the studio. So, hola papi. All right. I'm just gonna reconnect this GoPro so you guys can see what we're doing. Do it with a pod go, pod GoPro. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Let's see here. Preferences, connections. There you go. Hero 8 Black. All right. Camera's connected. Let's see if I'm just going to do a lot of this backdoor stuff to get. Um, to get the GoPro streaming, but I think it's just cool that we can actually do that. Yeah, hopefully we got time, man. I tend to wonder at this point. All right. Let's run that little script. And let's see if the GoPro's now working. Uh, yeah, it's working. It's weird though, it said pairing stopped, but it still seems to be paired. So, just so you guys can see what I'm doing here, just for you, I'm putting this backup battery. <laughs> I feel like like that dude like off real genius or something <clears throat> the guitar without a head behind me where oh yeah the eight string <clears throat> we'll do that in another video 
I got enough guitars, not to brag, but I got enough guitars that we could do a guitar a week, and I got enough content for two years. So subscribe if you haven't, so we can do a guitar a week for the next two years. By the how to remove the output jack assembly. What can I help you with, Nikki? What don't you understand? Put it in the comments. I know there's a little delay. <clears throat> Thanks, Alec. Semper Fi, brother. Um, so, there's not much to it, man. You, you remove these four screws. You pull it out. Disconnect the cable from... The main board and disconnect the ground screw from inside there. It's a bit more of a pain in the ass if you have a Variax that doesn't have a pick guard because um, you can't just lift this off and get to the ground screw. So you have to open the main cavity. Like on the, um, the Shuriken, which I have one in the other room, but there's a, it's a bigger cavity and then there's a, the ground screws in there. So, yeah. Oh, what I didn't show you, what I wanted to show you while this was out, um, a, a tip you could do is if you rewind back a bit and you look at the output assembly that ground wire that comes off that PCB uh, I've done this before replacing a jack on um, I think it was on my shuriken or something or no it was on a I think on a 59 so um, you could just desolder if you have experience soldering desolder that ground wire from the output jack PCB and then when you go to install the new jack of course you got to reconnect the main harness that carries all the audio and, and signals but you could solder back that ground wire back into the PCB yeah it, it's not going to just pull out without pulling up the pick guard and, and either removing that screw or like I said if you're experienced with soldering you have a iron and stuff you could leave the pick guard on and just pull this out, and um, I don't, I don't have a lot of wiggle room with that that cable harness, but yeah, there's a um, there's a ground pin on there. Oh, actually, I know what it was. It was a '69. We did it was Diego's, Diego's guitar. Um, he had he had dropped it with the freaking VDI cable in here, and broke the uh, the VDI or this EtherCon connector. So we replaced his, his output assembly in this room, actually, and just resoldered that ground wire on. So Diego, who's here in the stream, can tell you all about that. It's pretty easy, right, bro? All right, um, so we've got all that on. Um, we could even test it right now um, without strings and a neck, you know, by making sure it works. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's see. Plug this in. So I can't hear what you guys are hearing. Do you hear hum from the single coils? Hum goes away. Hum is back. Hum goes away. Hum is back. Turn on the modeling. Ah, no hum. Great. Right? So I bet you guys didn't know you could test it with without a neck and without strings. We're doing some unprecedented stuff here. So I'm, I've got the modeling on, hence why it's quiet. But if I touch, I'll try not to be too loud for you guys, but if I touch the piezos, you should hear them. You guys hear them? Hearing that? Hopefully. Otherwise we can change the bridge or something. Um, no to what? Let's see. Sucks that the comments are behind, but obviously I get it. Uh, let's see. We knew. Yeah, well, good for you, man. All right, so we're done with this. 
probably should put this cover back on after I clean it. Um, but I don't really need it right now. Uh, cavity cover is a little more important on a Bariax because you have the PCB for the piezos in that cable. Um, but if you want to be all John Mayer, Nuno Betancourt, and leave the cover off, it's all on you. All right, so let's install this neck. Okay, look at that. It's a beauty. <clears throat> it's looking bitchin'. What I want to do, I want to change this little tip right here to be white to match the pickups. Um, let's gently flip this over and put the neck plate back on. I should get this like etched. I wish I had an etching machine. I have, you know, some friends and stuff. Oh, you know what? I forgot that this neck, this neck is not drilled. So I will have to go get my drill. So, um, yeah, let me, let me switch back to here. Does look great. Thanks, man. Um, so I'm going to go and get my drill. So let me, um, let's see. Okay, I don't. <clears throat> Can you guys let anybody know that chimes in late that I'll be right back? I'm gonna go get my drill. All right, thanks. Hold your horses. back did you ever think you'd see a guy with a hammer drill and bunny slippers we're doing unprecedented things here on this show all right this guy's crazy me or Alec or who all right Oh, now I got patience stuck in my head. So I'm going to use uh, a one eighth bit here. Drill this out. You can check that with existing neck. I want a little bit of play, not too much. All right, let me get my GoPro contraption set back up. Things I do for you guys. Thanks, Diego. Hopefully this is helping people pass the time. All right. <laughs> Unprecedented for YouTube, right? 
let's see here. Yeah, we're back. I love it when technology works. Okay, move these for you. Okay, let's make sure the neck is in there. All the way down. You know what I do like about these necks versus some other bolt-ons is you just snug it right down up in there. And um, do I have a little pad? You know what? I'm going to use my slipper. Um, you just snug it right down in there and uh, it's all good. There we go. Okay, so now let's change the fit here. Chuck, drill, there we go. Okay, so we're just gonna hold this down here. And I'm gonna just double check one more time that we're snug in there, okay. my battery is going to fail. Right now. <laughs> We're going to get like just enough juice to drill these neck uh, bolt holes. I love it. I love being under pressure. It's fucking awesome. Alright. I just wanted to test fit that that worked. It did. So let's put this plate on. I'm going to have this plate engraved. It's like born on 3-22-2020 on YouTube. This guitar was born. Practicing harmonic minor scales. Good for you, man. We all need to practice all the time. So what do you guys think of this idea? I want to do, I mentioned like a guitar a week for the next two fucking years, which will probably go longer because God knows I'll keep buying guitars. Um, but uh, I was thinking to do that guitar a week. I want to set up a proper workbench in the studio here and um, uh, go through, you know what? Just to be safe, I'm gonna drill this out a little bit because I think we didn't quite go deep enough. Um, but I'm thinking to do the show where we just, not like a regular guitar review, but we look at the guitar, we talk about its history, we, we do a setup on it because um, God knows all these freaking guitars need setups. So uh, what do you guys think? One thing you definitely do not want to do is go so deep that you come out the fretboard. That's why they have machines do these things.
I'm going to put Pete Thorne out of business. Sounds great. Yeah. No, Nikki, not all Variax transplants. God, no, I don't have that many parts. No, just like all the, let me see, I tilt my head back. Like all my Ibanez and Washburns and other things, just going through, talk about, you know, what year it is, where it came from, how I got it, what it means to me. We'll go through a setup. I got tons of Floyd Rose guitars. Almost the vast majority of my guitars are Floyd Rose, so I know a lot of people are scared to work on them, scared to set them up. So we'll go through that and um, you know, talk about that a little bit, give some tips. I've got all different kinds of Floyd Rose as well. So you guys will get to see the intricacies of different types. I'm gonna drill this one just a little bit deeper. And if you need to check, you can go know how deep you need to go see okay lesson on setting up Floyd Rose would be great all right only reason I ever, I never got an 89. You know, you mean the 89 F. 89 has a fixed bridge. But I knew what you meant. Yeah, I got an 89 F right there. That's that's probably, or that is, not probably, it is the, the very X that I play the most. Um, not so much that I dive bomb. I just, I love the neck. It's super comfortable. Obviously, I like that style of neck and guitar. Looking around the room here, right? All right, we didn't damage the fretboard. We got the neck freaking solid on there. So I'd say mission accomplished. Thanks, Mr. Bunny Man. You helped us out. No problem. All right. So now we need strings on this mofo. Um. <coughs> Yeah, who knows how. <laughs> Hopefully we're not locked down so long that um, you need to, you know, we get to go through all my guitars when I'm locked down. That would be insane. Let's switch views here for a minute. Uh, so back here I've got all my cables, some equipment and stuff, but I've also got Ringing. Uh, I got more strings over here. Let's see what we got to play with. I got an original Variax in my case. All right. Oh, now my my quick starts want to work. GoPro. I was just switching cameras with my feet on Helix. That was pretty cool. All right. So, shout out to my buddy at Clear Tone for getting me all of these samples here. Um, I haven't got a chance to play with them too much, but they're pretty awesome. They basically, it's like the it, they they make all their own strings. Uh, they were making them here in Hollywood. Uh, until late last year, like last fall or something, August, September, they moved to Salt Lake City. But these are all made in the USA, their own factory, their own um, machines and everything, uh, their own materials. So they, Clear Tone makes um, coated strings, but the coating, go to their website and read all the science behind it. But it's so thin that it's, you know, you can't even tell it's there, but it's totally... Uh, adding protection to your string. I think they say they last like, oh yeah, 36% more volume, 48% more sustain, and they last five times as long 
as um, regular strings. So highly recommend checking out Clear Tone. Uh, we've got some Ernie Ball, Super Slinky, Extra Slinky. I want to use those. I'm gonna. These are all nines. I've, I've had these for a while because since playing Variax, I've pretty much stuck with tens. Uh, but let's see what we have here because I've got a bunch of different sets. I've got yes, those are super light, so we don't want those. Um, seven string sets. I think I have a lot of seven string sets. Fender Super Bullets. Um, I've got so many sets of nines. But screw it, let's just put them on. I got it. Oh, I do have a 10 right here. Let's make a custom set. So we'll do a 10 here. And then I'm just going to use this fender pack that I have. Oh, I already stole one out of here. Hopefully I stole the high E. Uh, Alec, yeah, like elixirs, but better. Um, definitely better. I get nothing from them, so that's all my opinion. So what do we have? We got four strings here. Um, Six, five, four, three. Oh, and I don't have a B. So I need a B string. I had more of those somewhere. Super bullets. Let's just use these super bullets. Maybe I'll change the high E to the 10. I don't know. I, I broke a string once in recording Variax with a set of nines. I was doing like acoustic and banjo parts and, you know, not like it was better or worse or anything, but when I changed the high E, I only had nines sitting around because I've got so many sets of those. Um, I changed the 10 to a nine and I definitely noticed a difference in sound. Again, not better or worse, but... Um, it was enough that I, I just ended up re-recording all the parts because I just wanted it to sound uniform. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I have not tried flat wound string. Sofa time or I divorce? Grazie Paolo. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, I do have my string winder here. Thank goodness. That was going to suck if I didn't. Um, no planet waves. Oh, let me switch back to the GoPro. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's see. Thanks, Paolo. Take care, man. All right. So what else you guys want to talk about while I'm doing this boring job of restringing the guitar? Oh, you know what? We don't have the nut on here. I forgot to do that in. That might help. Uh, I'm going to need a heat gun to take. I forgot that I... I got so caught up in everything last night, I forgot that I did not put the nut on. Oh, I had the nut. Where did it go? Hold on one second. Give me a minute. Let me take this GoPro off so I don't make you guys sick. Um, what else you guys want to talk about? There's the nut.
glue this in later, but it'll fit pretty snug and the tension will hold it down for now. So I'm not too worried about it just for this test. What else you guys got going on? Anything? Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Anybody get any new gear lately that's fun and exciting? Okay. Good enough for government work. I say that too much. I had a friend raving about them. Hard on your fingers. Flat ones, I think they're easier on the fingers. I don't know. Uh, I want to get some for my Hofner base just because I like the sound. Let's see, I'm reading you guys' comments here. Looking for a good mellow tone for jazz. Yeah, I mean. The, uh, so the thing with Variax, as most of you guys know, uh, it's what you put in affects what you get out. So if you have dead strings, bright strings, flat rounds, um, all that's getting processed in real time. So it definitely would affect the sound of the models. Again, not saying it's better or worse or anything, but um, it's just different. too many on there. Just leave it a little loose for now. Easy to slide across the fretboard but hurt pressing now for some reason. Finally got yourself a power cab. Good for the Helix but better for my Kemper. Awesome man. It's great to hear. I've got a few power cabs myself and I love them. All right, um, yeah, which power cab do you have? The 112, 112 plus, 212 plus? Let us know. And also let us know how are you using it with the Helix and the Kemper. Inquiring minds would like to know. throwing me off because I'm used to stringing these up with tens and I'm like this feels a little thin for an A string but that's because it's smaller than one in a ten set. Give it, making you guys uh, giving you motion sickness or what? Make a wrap on there. Let's hear about your power cab, my other Nick. Tell us, give us the goods. How are you using it with the Helix and with the Kemper? Are you using the speaker models? Are you using flat mode? If you have a plus, are you using IRs? Let us know. I use both. I use um, everything but IRs. I've never been an IR person. Massive difference between rosewood fretboard and maple. Uh, to be honest, Alec. Uh, I have not um, 
encountered a massive difference. I mean, with any variable, there is some difference, but uh, I think it's more like it's obviously, I think the majority is aesthetics. Um, I wasn't really a maple board kind of person until the last few years. Um, not that I'm a maple board kind of person anyway, but um, I think it looks cool on some guitars. It's I think a lot of it is about feel, not necessarily feel of the tone, but just feel under your fingers, um, more so than the tone. Uh, I'm not going to get into the tone wood debate or my thoughts on that. I, I think the tone wood debate in guitar world is like, it's like talking politics and religion or something, you know? It's like people freak the fuck out if you don't agree with them one way or the other. I'm a, I'm a scientific person, so I, uh, I like to defer to measurable scientific things, facts. Um, so there's no doubt that anything and everything can have an effect on your gear and not just your guitar. Um, but you know, it's like speaking strictly of the guitar, humidity, right? Um, temperature, uh, air quality. Are you out, outside? Are you indoors? Um, you know, how are you feeling? Like there's so many variables that don't phys just physically affect the guitar, but affect you as a player, right? If it's freaking cold, your hands are cold. You're going to play totally differently. Everything's going to feel different. Um, you know, the, the way a tr traditionally with electric guitar, right? Not talking about piezas, but just mag pickups, the string is interfering with the magnetic field in the pickup. And that's turning that into an electrical waveform, which is then amplified, right? We all know the basic principle of how electric guitar works. So knowing that, would the, you know, composition of the body, the neck, the scale, well, the scale length, I think, is a bigger deal, but the body material, the fret, neck material, fretboard, the nut material, all that, is that going to cause the string to move in a slightly different way if you change those variables? Sure, ever, you know, but to what degree, right? So if that affects the way the string moves and how much, how long it vibrates, right, it's sustained, um, you know, it's mechanical properties. Sure, it has an effect on your tone, but um, if, you know, you take the same exact guitar with a different pickup, tone's going to change way more drastically. So that's my quick elevator pitch on, you know, effects of anything and everything on guitar. Sure, everything has an effect, but to what degree? I leave it at that. Um, anyways. I only have one in maple and you love it. Cool, man. Yeah. I think ultimately, besides, you know, things that electrically affect your tone, be it magnetic pickups, piezos, modeling, effects, amps, um, besides that, it really comes down to feel from you as the player, right? I could pick up two identical guitars that were just slightly hand sanded a little differently on the exact same neck shape and one might feel better than or you know different or than the other and that just might affect the way I perform on it right it's kind of like I I tell people what I like about switching between like keys and guitar is that I feel like I play totally different things like I come up with different ideas not just from the sonic inspiration like of course with a keyboard you can go um, for millennia through different types of sounds and that will inspire you certain ways same thing with guitar effects and amps and everything but just like the way the keys are laid out it's all linear right I'm, I'm pressing down on on keys on 
essentially buttons, in the, so to speak, um, that take a certain input from you know, the mechanical motions of my fingers. But that motion, that mechanical input from my fingers is different from how guitar strings react to my fingers. So, and just the nature of how you play guitar, right? Um, how you select notes and like, you know, you're doing the note triggering, so to speak, and velocity and everything with one hand and selecting notes and doing vibrato and whatnot with your left hand. So on, on piano or on keyboards, everything's independent. You get all of the attributes per finger. So it's just it's completely different. Um, but I love that because it's like there's ideas I've come up with and s ways of playing or soloing I've done on keys that I would never do on guitar and vice versa. So I think it's just like it's just cool you know, having different options available to us and and recognizing that, you know, you're not going to play the same. Same thing with guitar to MIDI. I mean, you know, you guys know I'm a guitar synth nut to no end. Um, but, uh, you know, like, if I pull, play a piano part with a guitar synth versus I play a piano part with an actual keyboard, or piano it's going to be totally different just because again the way i'm playing the instrument so hold on my other mic i'll get to your question after i finish winding up this string sorry it's like the longest string change job known to man because i'm got a gopro on my head and i'm not holding this in the optimal position and i'm trying to talk and answer your questions um, let's see playing one to oh, let's go back I'm gonna switch to this view so you guys can see me not to yeah, go for oh what happened oh, there we go yeah um, some stuff coming in here oh you got a spark amp coming awesome Alec I'd love to hear what you think of it to me, it's like every you know everything Amplify wanted to be or should have been, or a lot of what it was, um, but uh, with a few extra bonuses, cool. Uh, let's see. My other Nick, you have a plain one twelve mostly for my Helix. I don't do rehearsal with the Kemper, just an FR FR mode and cab IR in the Helix. Um, so you're not using any of the speaker modeling? Hmm. I would say uh, give that a shot, man. Especially you got a Helix, like just being able to pair speakers with certain amps. And then if I assume you have a Variax, since that's what we're talking about. But that's that's why I love the, the trick. I call it, you know, well, I don't want to say power trio because that's something else. But. It's like the, those, those three products, it's like the ultimate rig because the Variax, Helix, and Power Cab, I hit one foot switch or have my you know, backing track player do it for me, switch my guitar, tuning, effects, amp, speaker, or flat, or whatever. So I can go, I can have like the great amp in the room experience with the guitar uh, amp a guitar model, a guitar amp, and an actual speaker model, you know, and get that enjoyable in your face interaction, and then hit a button and a foot switch and go to an acoustic in flat mode and get this rich, full, mic'd up acoustic sound. So I did, I pretty much just switched between those two speaker models for electrics and flat mode for um, Variax. But I do use flat mode like, um, one of the things I'll probably do a video on this or something in the studio, I actually keep a power cab standard over to the side. It's not here right now because I got guitar stuff in the way. But um, when I'm tracking, not just myself, but clients, I'll have that um, sometimes kick back as well. But I have an, a separate output from Helix Native, which is obviously using the cab models, but going out to the standard power cap standard and flat mode so even though it's not the amp in the room speaker model we're 
we're tracking for a record anyway, so you want the mic'd up cabinet sound, but at least it just gives like, it's a guitar speaker, so even in flat mode, it's still more responsive and more interactive than like, let's say studio monitors or PA speakers. So that's how I like to use um, flat mode with electric guitars uh, and power cab. So Alex says, uh, oh yeah, so sorry, Nick said, Previously used a Headrush FRFR, but bass um, EQ was blew the roof off uh, way too much. Yeah, I um, I don't know which Headrush model that was. I I think I tried the the 12 like for 10 seconds one time and not a good listening environment, so I can't really speak to that. But you know, a lot of people like it. I picked it up and it seemed quite heavy for as small as as those are, but. Um, let's see, definitely a different feel. Okay, we already went over that. Does the insides of the Variax influence the magnetic sound in any way, or is it just switched to the output electronically? Um, I don't think they influence the mags really at all. Um, so there's a couple things to note when you're coming out of the quarter inch. Uh, sorry, quarter inch. Whether you have a um, a battery installed or not, you know, your mags are going just literally straight out. So, you know, via tone, uh, volume, byway, straight out there. When you're connected on VDI, the magnetic pickups do get digitized, so they get converted from analog to digital to be able to be sent down. The digital data stream of VDI, digital audio, right? But that's no different from if I plug in a passive guitar into my audio interface to record into a computer, I'm converting it analog to digital. So um, in either sense, I don't think the mag uh, or the electronics affect the mag pickups really at all. Um, Depending on if you change your mag pickups, uh, as Partev will tell you a million times, um, if you change it to like some crazy uh, impedance um, pickups that are like outside of, I think it was like 8 to 10K, 8 to 12K, something like that, um, you know, you could get a darker sound because the way it's loading on the circuit. Um, but as far as the stock pickups, you know, you could take these pickups, you know, wire them through the volume tone of five way without the guts in there and you shouldn't hear really any different. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, let me know. Different is always cool. Cool, man. You can't control the models from the Variax in a non-plus version. Can you? Well, you can't control any of the... Well, I don't, I don't want to say that because you could assign the volume and tone knob to control stuff in Helix, but the I think what you're meaning to say is you can't control the um, settings of a power cab standard from a helix that's correct you need to be either connected via l6 link or midi which you can only do with the plus models of power cab personally 99 times or 999 million times out of a billion i um i would recommend the power cab plus to somebody i i it's very rare that I would recommend a standard to somebody. So in that recording situation I mentioned in the studio, for me, standard's fine because I just leave it in flat mode all the time because I'm just using it with Helix Native with cab models or if I was doing an acoustic, which I wouldn't monitor through there anyway in the studio, um, then sure, but... Yeah, um, if you don't have the plus, my other Nick, I'd say 
I don't know how long ago you got your power cab, but if you could exchange it for a plus and upgrade, great. If not, no hard feelings. Um, do what you can with it. It's still a great unit. Um, you just can't, you know, you got to be like set and forget it. So if you're always using either IRs in Helix or Kemper or the stock cab models in either unit, then and you leave it in flat mode, then you don't need a plus. But if you want to do all the cool switching and stuff that myself and others do, you need a plus. And that, to me, is the real benefit, I think, of, of all of it, is tailoring. It, it's, it's like the benefits that Helix and everything amp modeling has brought, which is you can tailor your amps and effects and stuff, your signal chain, up to your physical amplification system to your sound. Well, now you can tailor your physical amplification system to your sound or to, to you know, your rig as well. So it's really the the other half of your tone. I mean, I've said this to people many times since Power Cabs launched and even before that is that people forget how much the physical amplification system, I'm not talking guitar amp, I'm talking about how the sound gets reproduced acoustically they forget how much that affects their overall tone. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's huge. All right, let's just snip some of these guys here. poking myself with freaking strings. Drives me nuts when people leave the strings sticking out of the tuners. Unless you're like, you know, we're doing a Floyd and you put the ball end in there, you know, then it's okay. Because you don't have like shards of strings to stab people with. But if you're not having the ball in there, I think it's just stupid. Welcome, man. All right, moment of truth here. Let's, uh, I guess, go back to the GoPro since I'm wearing it on my head like an idiot. Just gonna plug this guy in. Oh, it's probably gonna sound horrible to you guys because you're not. In That's because I put the tuner on. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. 
I forgot as my microphone is going through the helix, so I forgot that when I go to the tuner, it'll cut off the mic as well. I think I can um, switch that, but I didn't do it. So thanks for letting me know, guys. But anyway, I get to use my TC Poly tune, which is what I was telling you guys. Um, it's my favorite tuner anyway. like the everybody's nightmare right listening to somebody tune it's probably a good thing it was muted if you guys haven't tried the poly tune i highly recommend checking it out so once you get pretty close you can just uh, strum all the strings and check instead of going one by one like i'm doing right now at the end, I can just go and see all the strings. Let me switch back to the GoPro so you guys can see this. Uh, you see the Go or the Polytune display here? Let me see. There you go. So when I strum all the strings, I see all six, and I get little red and green. It's a little. Yeah, it's cool. Highly recommend checking that out. Okay. All right, let me put my headphones on so I can actually hear what the heck you guys are hearing. Well, I'm going to take this GoPro thing off. Oh, there we go. Side tone. So there's the mags. Okay. Modeling. Oh. Forgot to put the tuning knob back on, but. acoustic I like to do the acoustic for a check because then it lets me know like everything's good yeah I like the acoustic I came up with this little riff um, the other day that I thought was cool but to playing on my left leg. I don't like playing on my right leg. Anyway, it works. And we got the 12 strings, right? Probably some setup work I could do to optimize it. 
you know, I didn't, these uh, saddles look like they need to be adjusted and pickups and, you know, general setup stuff, truss rod and whatnot. But anyways, there you have it. Recorded Variac standard guts, essentially in another Variac standard. But um, I think this one looks way cooler. What do you guys think? Man, this mic is noisy as hell, even with the cloud lifter. Let me, um, is that better? There we go. I think that's better. A little less noisy. But, um,. man glad you like it i like it too and yet another tuning knob i pulled off of uh one of my others but yeah thanks diego thanks mikey thanks alex thanks for everybody who hung in long enough let's uh get the wide shot here Ooh, wow that looks pretty badass I think they should come out with this. And uh, yeah, this is cavity cover or trim cover. Yeah, it works, man. Say hi to Karen for me. I don't know why people, you know, talk smack about this stuff. I think it sounds great. Good hanging with you guys, too. Anyways. Let me hear a little more of Silver Coil, huh? Um, yeah. So that's that. Thanks for hanging in, guys. Any last minute questions? Let me know. Um, or, you know, write me on Facebook. We'll talk about this. Uh, thanks, brother. We'll talk about this stuff um, on the Facebook group like we always do. So maybe I'll take a nice picture of it and post it up there. See what you guys think. All right. Have a good one. My wife's waiting for me as well. So rock on. Thanks for staying here and hang in there life will go on as they said in jurassic park that's some cold coffee <laughs> rev starry x next week yeah you wish brother oh maybe one day well uh if you if you buy me the rev star i'll get the parts and let's go in the garage and make it happen all right take care everyone thanks again for tuning in see you later